Hey everyone, join us for on this on.net episode where we're kicking off our identity series uh, with our special guest, uh, John Patrick Dunderson. So don't miss out. Welcome everyone uh, back to the On.NET show. Uh, today I'm really excited because we are actually kicking off a brand new series around the Microsoft identity. And for that, I brought uh, my very good friend, uh, JP Dunderson or John Patrick, uh, to talk to us about the Microsoft identity and what it is and why should developers care about it. Hey John, nice to have you on the show. Thanks, thanks for having me, good to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. Uh, sure. So I am uh, I am a, a developer advocate for identity. So uh, I go uh, help developers try to use our identity platform to build new solutions and uh, keep them out of the news. Right? <laughs> <laughs> keep the models in use. That's very important. Uh, now there might be some people that don't really know about the the identity itself, the identity platform itself. So do you want to talk us a little bit to talk to us about a little bit about the uh, the platform and what it has to offer to the developers out there? Sure. Uh, so if you're a developer, old, new, uh, familiar with identity or not familiar with identity, I feel like we've got a we've got a product, a platform, or a protocol for you, right? So uh, we start with our with our base platform, which is is all industry standard base. So OAuth two, OpenID Connect, uh, all sorts of different protocols, and and we keep it up to date uh, as as quickly and as as robustly as we can. And uh, if you're an experienced or seasoned veteran when it comes to, to building identity so, uh, solutions or integrating identity into apps, uh, you can use whatever library you choose, right? Um, and, and that gives you access to sort of the, the raw underlying power of, of Azure AD and the identity platform as a whole. Um, and then when we think about what it is that we're going to be accessing, uh, we look at all the different types of identities we can support. So, uh, of course, we have things like work and school accounts with Azure AD, um, things that you might use to sign in with Office 365 uh, today. So if you sign into your email or into SharePoint or Outlook.com, something like that, uh, that's most likely using an Azure AD account, and that's an account that your uh, your apps can or your users can use to sign into your apps as well. But beyond just what is work and school accounts, we've got all of the personal accounts, things like uh, your Xbox account, the thing you use to sign into your Xbox or Xbox Live, or your Outlook.com consumer account, all of those things that make up the, the Microsoft consumer side, right? Right. Um, and then beyond that, if you're building a new solution and you want users to come in from wherever, uh, we've mm -hmm. got uh, we've got external identities uh, and also something called Azure ADB to C, which lets you bring users in from virtually any standards-based uh, identity system. So uh, wherever you are, whatever kind of app you're building, um, it, we most likely have support uh, for getting those users into your apps and, and giving you a way to control and manage uh, manage access and manage those identities without having to host the password database yourself. Nice, that is sweet. But I think the identity platform extends uh, beyond just authentication and authorization. And I think as part of the series, we'll be examining that. But can you give us uh, maybe a high level uh, description of what that entails, especially when you're working with Azure? Yeah, sure. So if you're if you're not an identity geek, right, like we are, <laughs> um, if, if everything that we just talked about is sort of foreign and it doesn't make any sense, because yeah. why would it if you don't do uh, if you don't do identity work on a regular basis, um, we ship a set of libraries uh, mm -hmm. and those libraries uh, span the gamut of, of most uh, most modern languages. So, uh, of course, .NET and JavaScript, uh, both node server side JavaScript and client side JavaScript and Angular and React. Uh, we ship libraries for uh, for those platforms, uh, Python, Java. And those libraries abstract all that complexity away. <laughs> so instead nice. of needing to know what what's the authorization code flow or what's the you know what does PKCE mean, uh, instead our our libraries attempt to abstract most of that complexity away uh, away for you, so that you can focus on building a solution and uh, feeling confident that you're building it with the right uh, with the right flows at the right time uh, for the kind of for the kind of app you're building. Um, and in addition to that. Uh, we have libraries that 
help you integrate that same kind of strong security you get when you sign into Office 365 or Azure. We, we give you the same ability to do that with your apps and your APIs. Uh, so if you want to sign users in, if you want to secure your APIs and you want that to all be Azure AD backed, uh, our libraries help you do that as well. So uh, we try to cover both the consumer side of I'm consuming an app and then also the developer side of I'm building an app or I'm building an API um, by giving you uh, APIs and code that uh, do the majority of the heavy lifting for you so that you can uh, fall into the pit of success, right? The pit of success, I like that. <laughs> That's almost like you're falling into the pit of success, which is sort of like going down and then going up because you're elevated. But what about, there were other things like mass identities, Visual Studio integration, you know, uh, infrastructure as code, because the, these are all tied nicely with that kind of the identity platform that we have, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, the advantage of, uh, of us having this sort of fully vertically integrated stack of Azure and Office 365 and, um, and the identity platform means that we can enable a lot of new scenarios around uh, how you get code out the door, how do you deploy code, how do you build your code, uh, and then ultimately how do you run your code uh, in the cloud. So we have services like Managed Identity, which uh, sort of take everything that you would have to do as a developer to integrate with Azure AD directly mm -hmm. and uh, it does the bulk of the work for you when you're hosted in an Azure resource. So right. if, let's say we built a, uh, we built a web app that needs to, um, to talk to a SQL database that's hosted in Azure. Well, right. you know, historically we might have used uh, you know, Kerberos and Windows AD on-prem, but we don't have that in the cloud. Right. So instead, we use Azure AD to secure access to SharePoint, or excuse me, to uh, SQL. Mm -hmm. And we also use Azure AD to secure access to um, the web app that, that's in front of that SQL database. And when we take that and combine that with, with managed identities, uh, we don't have any secrets stored anywhere in our apps, right? Right. Um, we give our Azure resource an identity and that Azure resource uses its own identity uh, using the underlying system of managed uh, service identity into uh, to connect up to these other resources like SQL, like the graph, like your own APIs that you've built mm -hmm. um, and sort of significantly reduces your attack surface because now you don't have to worry about, oh, did I remember to put that secret in the right place or uh, did I accidentally check it into source control because you don't even need a secret anymore for that to work. That is amazing. Now, some developers can, may come back and say, well, John, you know, uh, that all sounds great, but when I go file a new project in Visual Studio and I create a new ASP.NET uh, project, I get identity out of the box. Why should I strip that out and bring Azure AD or B2C or, or whatever your new funky term is, external <laughs> identities? Uh, it, why, why should we care? Like, why should developers care about the fact when we already have a solution maybe for some of our, um, specifically for .NET uh, applications? Well, so in fairness, one of the options in Visual Studio is to choose a work or school account, or sometimes it's called True. an organizational account. True. So if you did that, don't rip it out. But <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, the real risk that, the, the real risk that you end up with is that you now have a password database. So yeah. you're storing usernames and passwords in a database right. um, that you are now required to host, manage, secure access to, control access to. Um, but then you also have all of the lifecycle commitments that you have to make of, is this user still active? How do I delete this user? How do I uh, do things like <clears throat> enforce MFA on this user yeah. or yep. uh, you know, only enforce certain um, a certain rules to apply for me to access this application. All of that kind of work is, uh, is stuff that you would have to build on top of having this new sort of operational security aspect of, well, I've got a password or I've got a database full of usernames and passwords. And of course, that makes you a, that makes you a hot target on the internet as, uh, <laughs> as Troy hunts, you know, 10 billion identities or whatever he has in his, uh, in the have I been, have I been pwned database. Uh, goes to show, right? Yeah, you don't want to make the news, right? So uh, that's the whole point. You abstract, you delegate the this user management, the authentication, the multi-factor stuff into a system that is already ready for you to use out of the box with a, a myriad of SDKs and examples and samples. And all you have to do is just pull the right components into your app and you're done. 
Now um, we have a lot in our in our uh, program here in this series. We have a lot of exciting stuff that will probably take a lot of the terms that we used uh, in the introduction episode today and break it down into uh, more uh, digestible components. And I believe that this will be um, things that we'll look in, in more in depth. So yep. um, tell us a little bit about the, the series here. What are we going to be learning? So I think that if you manage to sit through all of these, if you make it through all of our, of our quick bites, uh, <laughs> I think that by the time you by the time you finish, you'll realize of uh, sort of how straightforward it is to to start using Azure AD in your apps. This is to start using the identity platform as a whole, um, right. to really uh, you know build apps that you can have confidence in the security in, and um, also important that your security teams and your infrastructure teams can have confidence in too. Right. The right. the the stakeholders of your apps, be it internal line of business apps or external apps that you know, your customers are going to be using. You know, by the time we're, by the time you're through this, uh, I think you'll have, uh, be much better equipped to feel confident to say, yeah, we, we feel like this is a solid secure application uh, that uses an identity system that we can trust. So uh, we start out with some of the fundamentals around the you know, service principles and app registrations. Those get words get thrown around all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that uh, it's a foreign concept for a lot of folks who've never used it because they're you know, <laughs> very specific to what, uh, very specific to how our platform works. Um, and then we look at some of the SDKs of, of how do we tactically integrate with the app? You know, what is, right. <clears throat> what are we doing uh, in order to enable authentication in our app or to get tokens to go and talk to uh, different services, be it our own services that we've built or the graph SDK or the graph APIs. Uh, or the Azure management APIs, or the, mm -hmm. uh, the Office APIs, but but mostly the graph. Um, and, and then we sort of move into more operational and deployment type questions of uh, how do we manage app secrets, right? Like how do we mm -hmm. uh, use things like managed identities to talk to Key Vault to go and get uh, security keys for for resources um, that you know just use a static key, something like a Cosmos database, right? Right. Um, and then lastly, we're going to get down to really where I think a lot of the value is, which is in Power Apps and in, in .NET Core, where you as a developer have the ability to start pushing other people um, uh, in your organization to say, hey, instead of me building this app and having to own it and maintain it for you, I'm going to give you an API and you, Power User, can go and build an app that solves the business problem that you need and you can own it, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot. I'm I'm excited. I think it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, and you don't have to consume all of them. Uh, I'm pretty sure there will be specific components that you might uh, be interested in more um, or less uh, into this series. But we give you everything, and then you can choose the right things that will make you successful when it comes to working with the identity platform uh, and your applications. And yep. I think there's uh, one more slide that actually uh, shows you how you can get in touch uh, with our team. Uh, and this That's is right. all about. Uh, you know, we uh, beyond the on.net series, we also have a, a weekly uh, tweets stream where we tackle most of the stuff that we discussed today and then uh, more. And you can reach out to us on Twitter as well if you have any identity questions or any questions whatsoever. Uh, I'm not promising that I can solve all the answers or JP will be able to solve all your problems, but we can try for sure. <laughs> we certainly try to solve each other's problems all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, well, JP, thanks very much for uh, coming uh, on this episode and thanks for uh, helping us kick off this exciting series. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to uh, having uh, all these guests and uh, learning about all the stuff that we can do with the identity platform. So thanks for your time and thanks everyone for watching this episode.